everyone, it's Sarah from Sassy Reads, and today I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I read in 2018. So, let's talk about one of those net gallery reads that just, I was so excited for when I got approved for this arc, but it just, it missed the mark. We're going to talk about Blood Will Out by Joe Tregiari, I think that's how you pronounce her name. So, it follows a girl named Ari who wakes up in darkness, and she realizes that she's trapped at the bottom of a well. And she has no memory of how she got to the bottom of the well. Um, she doesn't know how she got there, doesn't know what happened leading up to it. And she's quickly running out of time before she heat dehydrates. And so she has to fight for her life and for her memory. Um, so, I thought this was going to be good. I mean, we follow a protagonist who wakes up at the bottom of a well. Which I like the concept. I do. I really like the concept. I love, like, stories that are kind of like this, like Comfort Food, Stolen a Letter to My Captor, where you follow people who've been kidnapped and are put in, like, situations where, they like, you wake up and, like, the reader's just following them as they've been, like, kidnapped. I like those kind of books. This was not a good YA thriller. So, the writing doesn't do well at setting the suspense or the impending doom. It's kind of meandering, and it's kind of like, well, we're in this well, and then we, like, flash back to, like, while she's gaining her memories, and it's like, that's it? That, that's it? And so, the stakes do get raised, but it's not enough to feel like I had to keep reading, and so, I was like, this thriller is way too easy to put down. Like, you're not supposed to want to put down a thriller, but for some reason, Blood Will Out just could not keep my attention, and I believe that it was two factors, the writing and the main character, Ari. I hated her. She's not likable at all. She's run-of-the-mill, incredibly mediocre. There's nothing about her that makes me want her to survive. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, okay. Um, and her conversations always felt fake. She is not really, no. I just, she's also like this terrible investigator who puts herself into situations and it's like, girl, you don't know what you're doing. You need to go home and you need to just stay out of things. So she was just really juvenile and I just wasn't a fan of her. So we also get perspective from the villain who is a, so, so, uh, a psychopath and that was interesting. And I was okay with it. I was like, okay, this is, like, probably, like, the area that's, like, keeping my attention the most. But then we find out who the villain is, and I'm like, what? Baby, what? Like, that that person was mentioned, like, one time. And, like, what? What? And then I hated, like, Ari's best friend. I just hated the characters. So, yeah, go read my review for this, because... I wasn't a fan of Blood Will Out, but maybe you will be. I wasn't. Then I finally finished Alice Munro's A Wilderness Station, which is selected stories from 1968 through 1994. I gave, I, I read this whole collection, you guys. I finally finished it. I, I started this in 2017, and I finished it in July, July 2nd of 2018. I was like, God bless. Woo. I don't ever want to read another Alice Munro story. The Alice Munro that's at the end of this is really good. The Alice Munro at the beginning of this is not good at all. So you can definitely see the progression of her as a writer, but man, some of these stories were not good at all. Um, I just, I'm not a fan of Alice Munro because my biggest problem with her is she writes these stories set in Canada and we follow these people and they live these lives that are usually full of something to make you raise your eyebrow. Like, I, I just can't explain it. Like, they do things that are questionable towards other human beings and then expect not to have any consequences. And I'm like, is this how Alex Monroe lives her life? Is she writing about characters who just do things because that's how people are? Or because, like, 
were just all pointless. And I was like, this book feels pointless. So therefore, Alice Munro is pointless. And so, why am I reading her? That's how I felt with all of this. Me being introspective, and I was like, oh, why am I reading this? Well, the books that I had to read for my class that I took in the fall of 2017, I really liked those short stories. Um, and there were a couple that I read on my own that I really enjoyed. Like, there was one called Royal Beatings. I gave that one five stars because I really enjoyed that one. But besides that, Alice Munro is not for me. But I don't regret reading her because I was able to reference her in my Britley class. And everyone, and like my professor was like, you know who Alice Munro is? And you're referencing her to this? Oh, that's such a great connection. And I was like, yes, it's a great connection because they both, um, Catherine Mansfield, she writes a lot like Alice Munro, or more like Alice Munro writes a lot like Catherine Mansfield. So I was like, mmm, they like have very similar like writing styles. Not necessarily bad, not enjoyable, but just like me andering through life to the point where you're like, kind of like, why am I reading this? Am I getting anything truly out of it? And in some stories you do, but in the majority of them you don't. And I sound really bitter. <laughs> kind of am just because this short story collection was so large then I had a redeeming moment I read The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager y'all I got an arc for this on NetGalley and I was like ah! because I had heard about Final Girls so I was like I want to read Riley Sager but I didn't think I'd get approved I got approved this is a five star thriller this was so good you guys Riley Sager's The Last Time I Lied blew me out the water. It reminds me of like a 1980s horror film where we're like in the middle of the woods at a camp and we follow this girl named Emma Davis and she has become an expert liar since what happened when she was a young girl and she had an experience at Camp Nightingale where three of her cabin mates went missing and they have all been keeping keeping secrets while they were there and she's been keeping secrets since then but now she's been invited to go back and so yeah they're reopening camp nightingale which means they're reopening cans of worms and she wants to know where these girls really are what happened to their bodies if they are really dead who murdered them and what's going on and camp nightingale has a lot of secrets but so does emma and so do the girls that Emma lived with for that summer 15 years ago. So, this was a wild ride. Riley Sager, he, like, does a great job of building up suspense. And, like, there was, I was just living for it. Like, I flew through the last time I lied. I was like, yes, I was so engrossed. I had to know what happened to the girls. And I love the dual perspectives in time where we were in the present at Camp Nightingale and in the past. And I just loved it. I love the characters. Uh, everyone was twisted. I, I'm here for an unreliable narrator. And Emma's an unreliable narrator. And we can't tr trust anything she says. And I was a fan of, like, I love when my thrillers give me, like, a mission of information. And then all of a sudden, like, the ante is upped once that information's revealed. And you're like, oh, Lord, here we go, here we go, here we go. I love that. So this was, like great for me because I was always kept on my toes. Um, the characters, horrible people, which means great thriller characters. I l ate it up. I ate it up. All of them. They were all horrible. But where this novel really shines is the ending. So like we get to like that part where you're like at the 80% part and you're like in like the cusp of the climax and I was getting disappointed. I was like, man, this was going to be a five-star thriller for me, but now it's like a four-star. And everything started to wrap up, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's a four-star for me. I really enjoyed this. And then I got to the last five pages, and I was sitting there like, wait, what? Wait, what? Y'all, this ending took me off guard. It blew my mind. The last time I lied has one of the best endings in a thriller I've come across in a long time. I was shook. I was shaken. I was like, ah. And I was so invested in everything, so, like, I didn't expect it to go there. And so I have a read for this. I'll leave it linked down below. Um, because I do talk about what happens at the end, so if you want to be spoiled or if you've already read it and you want to just discuss it with me, let's discuss it. So, yeah, obviously, The Last Time I Lied is the one that I recommend the most out of all these. Um, yeah. So, this is the only one that I own that I talk about. But yeah, let me know down below in the comments if you're interested in any of these books, if you're a fan of Riley Sager. Don't forget to subscribe.
Bye. I'll see you down below, and happy reading!